So give me seven minutes to unpack this and then I'll let you go. The Bible declares that Jesus in John chapter number one and one, the Bible says in verse number 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Oh, there it is. Jesus was the perfect example of grace and truth. Which means they both go together. They don't eliminate one another. They complement one another. Grace and truth. Grace doesn't remove truth and truth doesn't remove grace. It takes grace and truth. So to say I can do what I want to do by grace doesn't eliminate the fact that I can't do what I want to do because of truth. Because if you really understand grace, grace is the ability to give you the right to do the truth. Oh, you don't believe me. You don't believe me. Let, me, let me. Let me show it to you in the Bible. It is capsulized the best in this woman called in adultery. I love this because it is a theological uh, masterpiece of how you deal with the law in grace and grace in truth and grace in lasciviousness. It is a masterpiece. This woman is caught in the very act of adultery. So they grab her out to stone her because they said the law said, the law said, the law said, if you're caught in adultery, you have to be stoned. And so they brought her to Jesus right there when they were getting to stone him and they begin to ask him what what do we do with this woman? Because the law said stone her, stone her, stone her. Yes, she's done wrong. She's been caught in the wrong and she dem and justice demands a condemnation and a judgment on her sin. Stone her. And Jesus looks at him and you know he's writing on the ground. <laughs> and to fast forward, he says these words. So go ahead. Stone her. He, <laughs> the first one of you who has no sin worthy of such condemnation yourself, go ahead and throw it. And I don't know what he wrote, but whatever he wrote <laughs> made them put their rocks down, drop them. Because what you used to be stoned by under the law, you get released by under grace. Because he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. And he's ushering in this new covenant of grace. And so they drop their rocks and they walk away. Because they're not worthy to judge this woman in sin. And because Jesus is there, grace stepped in and said, what you used to be stoned for, now you can be forgiven of. Right. And the woman is crying and shaking and she walks up to Jesus. And I'm paraphrasing. She's like, I can't believe that this, I'm alive. I'm so happy. Jesus says, well, it ain't that simple. He says, where are your accusers? She said, there's no one here to accuse me. Jesus says, then now go your way. And don't do it again. <laughs> Which means grace is not giving me the ability to keep doing what I was doing. Grace is giving me the ability to not do it again. Which means just because God forgives you, don't you play with God's mercy. Because Jesus might not be there the next time to stop the consequence from kicking in. And this is why you got to make sure in your life and my life, we do whatever it takes to get sin out of us. Because we have now reached a point in the church where sin is glorified. 
the more carnal you are, the more relatable you are. And it's almost like you got to be carnal in order to be relatable. But if I got to relate with you by drinking with you, I'm just not going to be relatable. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You say, Pastor, does somebody go to hell for drinking? No, 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 no. You don't go to hell for drinking, but let me tell you what hell you might get into. <laughs> By drinking. I don't have a problem with it. Do it, do it. If you're fine with it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Go ahead, do it, do it. Grace affords you the ability to do it. Go ahead and do it. Because the Bible is really not against drinking. The Bible is against drunkenness. But I never met anybody drunk that didn't drink. Which means you got to be careful about getting into things that can turn into addictions. And that can turn into vices. That can turn into weights. I'm not here to put condemnation on people or tell people you can't smoke, can't drink, can't, can't do all that. Let me tell you what you can't do. You can't do nothing the Bible says you can't do. That's what you can't do. Whatever the book says, you can't do. And we got to move our lives. You want to know why? Because we are seeing preachers drop like flies behind addictions, behind perversions, behind lusts, behind all types of lascivious things. And the pews are worse. And sin is destructive. It's destructive. You don't ever want to get to the point where sin feels right. The most dangerous day in your life is when you can do it and not feel conviction. I can't lie and not feel it. Something's supposed to go off in there. Something's supposed to say, no, that's wrong and you know that's wrong. You need to deal with that. And then you go to God and say, you just heard that. You just, you just know I lied. You just know I flat lied about that. Now, Father, teach me. What did, why, why did I do that? What, 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 was it fear? Was it what people thought? Was it pride? What, 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 why did I do that? Oh, I'm teaching good now. Uh, I'm teaching good now. Y'all just added five more minutes to this message. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You want to know why? Because God has been so good to you. He's been so good to me. He's kept us from things that would have destroyed our lives. And he tells the woman in adultery, I don't even want to talk about your adultery. I forgive you. But you got to go and change your lifestyle. Why? Because grace removes condemnation, but it does not remove consequences.